Today we here at Scandatech will show you how to replace the battery in the iPhone 5C. Let's begin at taking a look at the battery kit and the included tools. So we'll go ahead and open this up. So first of all there's a thank you. Then we'll remove this layer here. So let's begin with this tool. There's a Phillips screwdriver for removing any internal screws today. There's a plastic spudger pry tool. Here's another plastic pry tool. Here's a Torx or pentalobe screwdriver for removing the screws out of the bottom of the phone. There's a tweezers that will assist in various parts of the repair. Let's go ahead and remove another layer here. So we get down to here. There's a suction for assisting with opening the LCD screen on the phone. Here's a battery designed for the iPhone 5C inside electrostatic discharge safe plastic bag. And there's an adhesive set for refastening the battery inside the phone. We want to begin by explaining that the iPhone 5C battery replacement is slightly more difficult than the iPhone 5 or any previous model battery replacement. As with any hardware replacement, complications can arise, but if following this guide and our text guide with pictures, which can be found on our website, with patience we'll walk you through the process step by step. We recommend listening to the whole video without skipping any steps as we highlight potential difficulties. So now that we're familiar with the tools, let's go ahead and get started with the phone. This is the iPhone 5C, as you can see. So you want to go ahead and make sure that your device is powered off. The next what we want to do, there's two screws right here in the bottom that we need to remove using the Torx pentalobe screwdriver. Let's begin by removing these two screws in the bottom right here. Grab that screw, set it off to the side. Next let's remove the second screw. If you can't grab them with your fingers, you can always grab them with the tweezers once they're loose and pull them off the side. Next what we're going to want to do is grab our suction cup here and we're going to want to set it down on the screen just above the home button right here. You don't want to set it on the home button because you can't have very good suction there. So you want to do that and you want to press it down so it has good suction. Then what we're going to do is we're going to gently pull upwards. We're going to put gentle pressure upwards. Now what you're going to look for is to see it start separating right here the gap right here. If you do carry your phone in your pocket, there may be some lint build up in here so it may come apart kind of hard. But what you can do is you can use the tweezers and you can very carefully just wiggle right in here to assist with opening this up. Make sure to not go in very far and you also want to make sure you don't damage the frame at all in any way. So now that you're beginning to get a little separation there, what we can do is we can grab the plastic spudger pry tool here and we can just pry in a few places up through here and then it starts separating really well. You can see it's separating really well. Now before we go too far here, let's remove the suction cup tool. It removes really easy if you pull up right here on this little tab sticking up. So then as we pick up, now we have three options. We can either keep holding this at a 90 degrees and try to do this one handed, but it's a lot more difficult. The other option is to have a book or something. I'll just use this for a demonstration, this box here. But if you have a book or something heavy that you can lean against while you're performing the repair, that's a second option. But the third option that we recommend is to completely remove the LCD. It's so much easier. It's overall the easiest way to do because then you can use two hands for the entire operation. So next while you're still holding this at a 90 degrees, what we need to do is disconnect the battery right here. So we're going to use the Phillips screwdriver and we're going to remove these two screws right here. So let's go ahead and remove these screws. Now these screws are the same size so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. We use our tweezers and remove the shield right here. The next use a plastic pry tool and remove the battery connector right here just by carefully prying up on it. So let's get this connector kind of out of the way here. Then what we need to do is unpack our new battery and then we can grab it and we can set it right down in here on top of the old battery because what we're going to do is we're going to test it to make sure that it's working. So go ahead and connect it down in here and then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to just set the screen down like this and we're going to need to power the phone on, test the battery. If the battery isn't charged enough to turn the phone on, go ahead and plug the phone in and let it charge for like 15 minutes. Once you get it up and you know it's working, make sure that the battery is charged at least 3% before turning off the phone. Make sure that your phone is shut down again. Then what you can do, once you know that your battery works satisfactory, you can disconnect it here, remove the battery. Next what we're going to do is use a Phillips screwdriver and we're going to remove this plate right here. So these four screws that you see, let's go ahead and remove these. Now you want to keep track of these screws where you put them. If the screw is loose but it doesn't want to come out, you can just leave it there and then pull it out carefully with the plate. Go ahead and remove that screw. Let's remove the fourth screw. Then we can use our tweezers and carefully go under this shield right here. Just pry up, get that out of the way. Now if you run into this trouble like I did, there's a remaining screw, you want to grab that and put it out of its way. Now those screws you want to make sure to keep them in the right order because this one here is longer. 
Make sure that you keep these in the right order so you know how they go back together. So next we're going to use our plastic pry tool and we're going to carefully pry up on the connectors here. In this order, you want to do those two and then this connector. Then the screen comes right off. If for some reason you happen to accidentally disconnect this connector, you can just go ahead and reconnect it. Also, we'll check this when we put everything back together. So the next step is finding where this tab is right here. Below the battery, there's a little tab that you can use the tweezers and carefully get in there. You can carefully get in here and unfold this black part. And what it is, is there's two strips running right under here. Just like the strips like this, I can show you by showing, laying it on the battery here. That's what these two strips look like. And as you can see the black part on here, this is the part that we're unfolding right now, is this black part here. And so what we need to do, we need to cut these in half right here, just this black part. We need to cut it in half with the scissors or something. So that's our goal in getting this opened up here is that we can cut these in half so we can pull these out individually. So now that you've cut these in half so that they come apart individually, you can see they're separated from each other. Next what we're going to want to do is use like a hair dryer or heat gun and we're going to apply some heat on the back side right here on this side only. Not on this side because this is where the motherboard is on this side. But what we're going to do is just apply some heat on here on the back side of the battery. What we're going to do is we're going to use the tweezers, the back side of the tweezers here, and we're going to carefully pry up on this side right here. We're going to do this before we try pulling out this adhesive strip. Don't pry on this side at all against the logic board. You don't want to pry at all against there. And also there's a flex cable running under the top of this battery right here for the volume button over here on this side. So you want to stay away from this as well. So you want to pretty much go from here down. And what we're going to do after we apply some heat is we're just going to carefully pry under this battery and try to leverage it up a little bit here. And you just want to carefully pry just to crack it loose a little bit. What our hopes is, is we can help loosen it a little so this adhesive strip will pull right out. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna do this side first, the left side first, and we're gonna grab onto that with our thumb and our finger. And now we don't wanna pull straight back because of the headphone jack right here. There's a sensitive cable in front of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to carefully pull and slip around the corner. And we wanna just kind of keep pulling like this all the way up through. This can get up to 12 inches long until this is all out. Now that we have that side out, you want to give it a little more heat on the back side here and you don't want to get it too hot, but then you want to, again, leverage here a little bit, wiggle it loose, see as it's a lot more loose than what it was. And then we're going to grab onto this one right here, the second one, and try to pull that and, and have it come right out. Now mine didn't come out the whole way, it tore. Sometimes it tears and it doesn't come out the whole way. But, so what you want to do is you just want to Keep prying it. If you have to give it a little more adhesive, if it seems like it's being stubborn, then mine let loose and it came right out. So now this is the residue that we have left. And we're going to need to use something like the tweezers or something and pull all this off of here. So now that you make sure to get all your old adhesive out of there, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our adhesive strips here. We're going to peel this bottom one off so that we're left with this part. I'll turn this this way. So let's just go ahead and set our strips down in here, keeping our tabs right against the back side here. And we can just press down, make sure that it's all stuck down nicely. Then we can pull this upper part here all the way off. So next what we can do is grab our battery. You wanna keep it almost tight to this top part, not quite. And you wanna keep it mostly tight to this side, give it a little more room by the logic board here if possible. So we're just gonna go ahead and set it right down in there. There's usually a little extra room and you will just wanna press it all down. Kinda of fold this tab right here. And then we're ready for reassembly. So to reassemble, we're going to grab our screen here. We're going to hold this like at a 90 degrees and we're going to start with our first connector right here. And let's go ahead and connect it right down in there. And we'll do our second one here as well. You have to do these in the right order. And do this third one right here. Make sure they're all pressed down nicely. Then what we can do is grab our plate, bring it over here. Then we'll use our Phillips screwdriver and start putting these screws back in. It's usually easier to start with one of these bottom ones and then just work your way around. So lastly, we want to reconnect the battery right here. So once we get the battery connected, make sure that the cable is down alongside the battery in this slot right here. Then we want to put the shield back on. So you want to grab it and set it down on there and put your two screws back in. So now that we got our two screws back in here, let's go ahead and set the LCD down like this. What we're going to do is we're going to pick it up slightly I'm going to turn it this way so you can see. We want to turn it at an angle like this a little bit and you want to get the top worked in first because the top has to get in the right place first. Make sure that you have a nice reveal all the way around here. And then we're okay to go ahead and set it down and you can just press down, work your way down around as you come down through. Now let's put our two torque screws in the bottom again. So if you're having trouble putting these screws in, you can grab them with the tweezers and set them in here. And then you just use your Torx pentalobe screwdriver and Tighten them in. 
first and the second one. Don't tighten too hard, but just nice and snug, and then you're all set. Enjoy your new Scandatech battery. Thanks for watching.